How is everybody doing? Welcome to this week's installment of Sounds Like Liberty. This is episode number 43 with the Launchpad Media, always launching ideas in your direction. I'm here as always with my lovely wife and co-host, Lizzie. How are we doing, Lizzie? Very well. Greetings. Are there greetings? I'm bringing you greetings. Greetings cards? No, not that good. Those kinds of greetings. Oh, well, what kind of greetings are we bringing us? Monday morning greetings. Almost Monday afternoon. I know, right? Because we're taking way too long to uh, get around to doing this. We are doing the things. <laughs> so, well, let's. Uh, we got our. We've got our, our conclusion, the finale to the yes. epic interview with Jeremy or Jeremiah so Harding. Epic. It was very epic. I um, hope you enjoyed the the first half. We covered so much ground. We're going to cover so. I much feel more. bad for the show notes that you had to write for this because it is pretty insane. But you know what? That means that people are getting more opportunities to, to find more things, and half of it is like stuff that I'm pretty sure you get on an FBI list if you look up. So have fun with that. That's, I mean, I'm, we're all, I'm on lists. I know, already. I'm sure most of us are on lists already anyways. I mean, they collect bulk data, Liz. Yeah, according to the statistics. You, you, you remember know, Clapper lied about it. There's and then, no getting around it, really. And then CNN sucked his dick about lying about it. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, let's uh, start out like we always do. We got a song. I, I'm excited about this song because it is one of my, my guilty pleasure songs. It is not pleasurable at all to me, but it d- was interesting <laughs> to read the lyrics. Okay. So. The song is uh, from a little movie back in the 90s called Dick Tracy. It's More by yeah. Madonna. Yes. Why don't you uh, start us off on this crazy trip, Liz? Oh, good Lord. Because um, I wasn't ready. Okay. Well, do you not. want me to start us yeah, out then? Yeah, so you start. Once upon a time, I had plenty of nothing, which was fine with me. Because I had rhythm, music, love, the sun, the stars, and the moon above. I had the clear blue sky and the deep blue sea. That was when the best things in life were free. There you go. Then time went by, and now I got plenty of plenty, which is fine with me. Because I still got love, I still got rhythm, but look what I've got to go with them. Who could ask for anything more, I hear you query. Who could ask for anything more? Well, let me tell you, dearie. Um, so I'm listening. Like, I'm listening to this, and you know who the first thing that comes to mind is? What? Jason Stapleton. Okay, why is that? Because Jason always talks about increase and how human beings are just d- wired to want increase. Doesn't yeah. matter how much you have. A- 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 be- because of our caveman brains, we are always looking for more. Like if you have a little bit, you you want to be better off so that you don't retreat back to a place well, that's yeah. less difficult or less or more difficult to, to thrive in. You could always be more secure. You could always have exactly. You know, less danger, less. You know, which frankly, I I think like I I loved reading this because I mean like, I think this per- the, well they're trying to paint this person in a particular way. Mm-hmm. I like the mindset that they have. Because the person is clearly was happy with nothing, right? But is also happy with things. And I, I think once we get into the, the lyrics, we'll be able to unpack a wee bit more about kind of that, that mindset. Because I feel like they they recognize where they are on the spectrum, and that there is kind of an end point mm-hmm. to it. Won't you, uh, won't you bring us into the next section? Okay. Got my diamonds, got my yacht, got a guy I adore. I'm so happy with what I got. I want more. Count your blessings, one, two, three. I just hate keeping score. Any number is fine with me as long as it's more. As long as it's more. Why are you giggling so hard, Liz? Because <laughs> this song is so... It just tickles me because... 
Um, I can get past, you know, her delivery on the, the actual song itself. I just find the lyrics really cheeky, and I, I do kind of appreciate the attitude of it a little bit. Um, and so it, it, I, I'm always tickled when I, when I hear I it. I mean, I'm going to be honest, it sounds autistic, not like it has an attitude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, like this person doesn't realize that they're saying something insane. Yeah. Well, there is that. Keep going. I'm no mathematician. All I know is addition. I find counting a bore. Keep the number mounting. Your accountant does the counting. More. More. <laughs> uh, I got rhythm music too, just as much as before. Got my sky and uh, got my guy and my sky of blue. Now, however, I own the view. More is better than nothing, true, but nothing's better than more, more, more. Nothing's better than more. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to argue. Yeah. I would like more for everyone. Well, I mean, and that is, that's the idea. The issue here is when people start looking at it as a zero-sum game, and if you have right. more, that means other people have Somebody less. Else has less, yeah. And they're not necessarily saying that song, which, that in this song, which I appreciate it. Um, because, yeah, I feel like... There are definitely ways where we could all have more. If, you know, technology makes a leap, if there's more opportunity out there. It's got to create the wealth. Yeah. So, let's see here. One is fun, why not two? And if you like two, you might as well have four. And if you like four, why not a few? Why not a slew more, more? If you've got a little... Why not a lot? Add and a bit, and it'll get you to an oodle. Every jot and tittle adds to the pot. Soon you've got the kit as well as the caboodle. More, more. Never say when, never stop at plenty. If it's ever gonna rain, let it pour. Happy with ten, happier with twenty. If you like penny, wouldn't you like much, much more? So there you go. Should I go on? Yeah, continue. Okay. Or does that sound too greedy? That's not greed. No, indeedy. That's just stocking the store. Gotta fill your cupboard. Remember Mother Hubbard. More, more. Each possession you possess helps your spirits to soar. That's what's soothing about excess. Never, never settle for less. Something's better than nothing, yes, but nothing's better than more, more, more. Except all, all, all. And see, and that's where I kind of go, I don't know about this. You can't have it all. Well, but that's what they're saying. Except once you have it all, you might, might find all else. I'm pretty sure they say a bore in the song. Um, bore, bore, bore. Yeah. How do you that like though me? things How do you are like bliss, me? there's one thing you miss. And that's more. And there is, I think, um, some something you could take from that because, you know, there are people who are really financially successful and, you know, they don't stop working. They just do work that they want to do because I feel like if you, you're not working towards something, you, I don't know, we're just, I don't, I don't think we're designed to just sit on our, our butts and not do anything, even if. We don't necessarily. Well, have to some do that of us to might be, but I, I'm certainly not. Yeah, I, I feel like, at least I personally, even if I were successful, I would want to be working on something. And um, mm -hmm. you know, when when they say you could have it all and you'd still miss working towards something, you know, I mean, I think that's. I kind of feel like that's what I'm here for—to like create value, to, to produce something. I don't necessarily pretend that I know what that something is all of the time, but you know, you want to contribute to something. I feel like that's just a human need. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with that. <laughs> um. All right. So this is just a lot of lyrics repeating the same basic I concept know. in here. <laughs> uh, she's. I'm. Uh, she looked at me. And she said, "It's not that long." I was like, "Oh my god, Liz." There's a lot of lyrical content in this not very long song. Well, I mean, it's a musical song, so it's all very like. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I think that it, the it does point out a very particular part of human nature, mm -hmm. or which is 
It's the way that we're wired because of how we've had to survive. Right. Like, you need to have more, and the more you have, the less controlled you are by the world around you, which right. means you're more likely to thrive. And that's right. just hardwired into us from our caveman brains, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps there's a point at which your brain says, oh, no, we have enough. I don't think so, though. Yeah. So, I think that in a libertarian world, there are natural ways in which that would be kept in check. Sure. That, unfortunately, are not kept in check yeah, in a I status paradigm. Right. right. So, well, um, I'm going to I'm gonna defer to you on this one. I'm curious. What do, um, you, where, what do you think? I mean, I feel like it's a pretty good song for me personally, because I just look at it as, you know, create more wealth, create more value. And you get more, and everybody gets more. More is not a bad thing. Um, and there are limits to what's useful, but if you're creating value for everyone, then you're always going to get farther. So I, I, I think it's got some pr- pretty good message. It's not really spelling out anything, you know, politically either way. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you could put it in the Lubega uh, section if you want. I don't know. I mean, I honestly think that it does more good than harm. Okay. Because I think that we don't talk enough about, like, the fact that this is legit how people are wired, wired together. To go for. So. Okay. Right on. Welcome to I Heard This Happen, the segment for aging hipsters. Each week we scour Bandcamp for underground new releases to wow your teenage children. So without further ado... Here's new music. Let's uh, let's move along then. What do you what do you got for me today? What what album are we looking at? Uh, I have a an album from an artist called Deja Bell. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually picked this up last week, and I it was wasn't out. Yet, so I was trying to kind of wait for it to um to officially come out so that I could kind of spell mm-hmm. it out. She's from DC, and it reminds me of um it reminds me a lot of Erica Badu, um I know, oh, no, a bit of no, India no, Ari, no. and then a little bit of Missy because she does some rapping in there, you but it's definitely. Uh, like kind of a fun soul almost hip hop at some points um feel to it and it's uh yeah it's it's not long it's an EP i think there's like four or five tracks um but yeah i enjoyed it i don't know why you keep punching your microphone today I'm Liz. so sorry i'd make you go back and re-record all of it if i didn't have to go to work <laughs> okay. so I'm just energetic. I can vouch. It actually was a pretty solid album, folks. Like, she she pitched it to me, and I was like, I like this. Reminds me of Erykah Badu. And I like Erykah Badu. (laughs) What do you got? Well, I actually have a return. Ooh, snap. Yes, we've actually pitched an album by this guy before. Uh, I have Thoughts and Moments Volume 1 Mixtape by Addie Suleiman. Oh, Okay. Uh, the album is an eight-track R&B album out of... I already said the UK. Sorry, folks. You're going to catch this. At my, it stopped recording on me in there. Um, it reminds me of like the likes of Twiddle, Small Degree, because it's very dancey, Wayne Wonder. Little Leon Bridges and Raphael Sadiq in there. There's a certain degree which he kind of has like the same affectation as James Morrison, just more black. Um, and stylistically, maybe even a little Mayor Hawthorne in there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, the standout track is Strange Roses, which clearly they knew because they chose to have that be the one that loads up when you first play it. Okay, there you go. Um, I was actually super excited to see this uh, new collection of songs from Maddie Saloon come out and come into my email. Yeah, yeah. Um, we pitched this album Memories about a year ago. And How was it that long ago? It was. I remember, yeah, those those good albums. Um, it, it walks a fine line between classic and modern R and B that I like. Mm-hmm. 
and I hate to sound hack and like parrot the people that are talking about it online, but the you know the consensus is that they say it's got a timeless sound. Okay, but they're kind of not wrong. Like, yeah, it lives in timeless sound. <laughs> You're like yeah. I okay. hate saying it, but yeah, it is what it is. I have um, to read it with people. Good yeah. lord. So. We, strangely enough, this is supposed to be a stopgap release to fill the space until his next album. Oh, wow. I wish all of my favorite artists would release material this consistent between <laughs> albums. <laughs> right? This is your filler? And I don't know what on. an album is, like, if this, this is eight tracks. Yeah. I guess I'm still not clear on what a mixtape is. <laughs> Well, yeah. What, that. what does that mean, folks? Please, someone who can definitively explain to me what a, what makes it a mixtape and not an album or an EP, I would love to know. I used to think I had a, a definition. I now no longer do. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. But that's uh, I think that's that's I heard this happen for this week. Hey, how's it going? Nikki P here. Want to support the show or just give a big middle finger to Patreon? Consider stopping over to supportsll.com. Members of the Freedom Choir get access to the private Facebook group and actual physical merch. Want access to the unedited raw interviews as they're recorded way before they're released? It's in there. Is that not enough? And you want membership to Freedom Song 365? It's in there. There's even monthly bonus swag for top tier supporters. So head on over to supportsll.com. Help Liz and I get to libertarian functions and even just cover the costs of making the show. If I'm not a good enough salesman, how about this? Support my mom and dad and sounds like liberty. Go to supportsll.com. You heard her, folks. Join the Freedom Choir at supportsll.com. So, are you excited to get, get to this interview? I am excited. Like, um, we get into more stuff, more craziness at the uh, the tail end of this interview, so. I, I remember the whole thing being just nonstop craziness, so. I mean, we we talked about, um, you know, being faster than normal and stuff, which I thought was cool. All right. Well, I won't waste any more time. Let's get to this interview. Well, do you know what, you know um, I, I discussed this in another piece. Uh, do you know what a gestalt is? Uh, I know of it through stuff that I, like, I've read, but it's been a long time since I went down that fucking rabbit hole. I studied. So I a stu- gestalt is the negative of an image. Okay. What it does is it means that you can fill uh, a space with uh, images that are not an image in order to create the like subconscious trick to an appearance of an image like um like a rorschach okay. test for instance for instance is a great example of adult because it does it isn't the thing but it's close enough to your mental representation for the thing that you can say yeah that's what that is yeah um the vase which is also two people kissing the uh um you know, things like that like like little images i posted on my blog um the chalice that's too late i think it was during my story about uh, yeah 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 so that tells you a lot about human psychology works um actually more than actual objects because ultimately um it's not the concrete stuff that informs our perception at all for the most part it's the it's the connections that we make to the concrete things that that allows us to think quickly not just process everything as a chunk versus a chunk versus a chunk but a series of assumptions that allow us to build a f- framework for further thinking later and not like necessarily all of the information raw, but everything like sort of moved into a paradigm where we have instincts about things that are generally proven true. And the people with the best frameworks form the best instincts and therefore the best impressions of the world because they have a, a better idea of the basics so they can form a better impression from the gestalt. That makes sense. No argument here. So, I mean, that, that, that that's the reason a lot of these people fail is because they're not looking at things as the gestalt. They're looking at things as, you know, what can I concretely touch? And when when you do that, you lose a lot in, 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 in avoiding the gaps. You lose a lot of, of information by only looking at what you do know and not what you don't. I mean, mm-hmm. fundamentally, the universe is a wide, vast thing, and there's probably a multiverse, too, that we haven't, like, even touched, much less scratched the surface well, of. So, even, we're a thing... We're, we're, go ahead. Well, even with something as simple as, like, 
getting into color theory and like what like, so the basis there is no colors colors do not exist it is chemical re reflection of light like exactly the, the fucking idea that like you're just it's just this wavelength is reflected off of this particular thing at a certain angle and this is how your eyes interpret it so that doesn't mean that there's not something concrete there mm -hmm. it's clearly something like there are things that interact differently that cause that to happen and perception is different ask a colorblind person how the fucking world looks like there's I, I guess it's my frustration with fucking know-it-alls pisses me off. <laughs> well, right, because and and that's 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 a sort of if you want to tie into liberty, a, a way that libertarians see things that a lot of people don't, a way that gets our movement called heterodox because you know it's heterodox, um, is the fact that we do primarily look at the Gestalt. Um, libertarians are generally more liable to look at what is unseen rather than what is seen. The invisible hand of the market governing a lot of things, whereas the average person needs you to point directly to something every single time. And um, <clears throat> that ultimately causes a lot of problems in communicating it to the average person because the average person says, well, I want X, Y, and Z. And they're all like, well, you can get to X, Y, and Z. You just need to do all of these things in order to let that X, Y, and Z more naturally happen. And then, like, that sort of response to the person who's been, t like, told their whole life to listen to politicians who give them easy answers to things rather than telling them the depth of how things work, um, that sort of answer seems like a non-answer. Well, it seems like a way to weasel out of actually giving some sort of concrete thing that people can talk about. And rightly so, but also because it's not us that needs to change, it's their perception that does. And so ultimately, the task of libertarians needs to be to uh, tell people why their perception needs to change so that they will want to see the world differently because it will make sense and the gestalt will appear to them naturally. I like this this, this idea. Um, I, I, but, uh, I, I study linguistics a little bit uh, and have over the years. and. It, it, it plays into like that whole fad thing in that like if I say dog we both have a mental picture of a dog that appears in our head and I can guarantee that we do not see the same dog mentally in our head whenever I say that word there is a different essential dogness that I'm sure we both have maybe yours is a fucking boxer and I see a chihuahua in my head when I see just the general idea of a dog and yeah football <laughs> <laughs> and and the idea like I, 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 you, you should talk about the just all the dogness isn't really all that's what it's important. It's what it's not that really makes it important. I, I know that a dog is at the football because, because I didn't see a football. I saw some idea of this thing in front of me. When I see red and say red, it doesn't matter what the red is. It matters what the red is not. And I think that is, at least in my, far more important to how like humans, how, how the human brain actually works than, say, sitting there and we could wax poetic about the definition of a fucking word for 20 hours. <laughs> Anyways, none of this has anything to do yeah. with music, so <laughs> I just don't get to talk deep philosophy with well, people very does. often. <laughs> Everything vaguely it has vaguely to do with music. Does because because <laughs> if, if you look at it, music is a high definition of that. Like yeah. People like different music and like dislike different other music, oftentimes because of the way their ears work, or because of the way they were raised, or because of the environments that they surround themselves with. The way their circadian um, rhythm works. Like, the connections I, it has to you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, ultimately, uh, when you're dealing with music, you're dealing with a very subjective taste. Like, you want to talk the dog, like, let me blow that perspective up. Um, two people looking at the same dog don't see the same thing. Because those two people have different vision capacities. Uh, those two people observe the dog and therefore cause changes to the dog that are irreparable. And therefore, the comparisons are automatically not uh, valid between the two. Um, and ultimately, the only thing that people can agree on are very basic details that, that similarly categorize the dog to the both of them. Did the so dog, even if you're did looking the dog have matted fur or not? Well, that all depends on what matted fur means to you. Right. No, the dog's fur is fine. It's just got a few little bits. <laughs> I, it looks feral to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, th I think the I think a primary point is in recognizing the perception gaps and trying to find common ground that fills them as effectively as possible. 
Um, and that's what music does. Like that music is sort of a shortcut there. Instead of instead of trying to logically dictate every single uh, thing about the music, um, you say what you feel and in the way that you feel it. And if you've done a good enough job at letting your art reflect your mentality, uh, people will get the information even if you didn't give it to them directly. Goddamn right. Yep. All right. Let's 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 rein this in because. I'm getting hungry. It's too, fucking, <laughs> too fucking early for me. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's, yeah. let's get I, reason, I recently got a deal on bulletproof bars, so I, I had one of those before uh, before starting my research for my own podcast. Yeah. Um, so I'm not terrible right now, and I actually kind of feel nice. I think the MCT, uh, the, the XCT, because they have a different type of MCT oil. Mm. The XCT oils really actually help quite a bit, so. I'm curious about this XCT oil. Um, we do the MCT here. I've never tried XCT. I'm interested. Well... I, if, I you, if you want I will... to try the, the protein bars from Bulletproof, so okay. I, I would I, like since I'm feeling the way it works for the first time on an empty stomach with only caffeine in it, I can tell you, I feel pretty satisfied, and this is tiny. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Check those out. That's cool. Anyway. All right. So album number two. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Uh. Okay. You well, that, you, that chuckle was ruining the, the mystique this. just for the record. That you sounded like not angry for a second. It was <laughs> confusing for me. Well, I mean, I'm the, the rage is always there. I mean, I never laugh. Um, sort of more of an insane movie villain laugh. You know, there's a there's a show called Happy that that recently came out that I'm like I, I love everything about the show, especially that it, like it was directed. Well, it's directed by the people who directed Crank. Um, and so my particular bias is to these sorts of like one man versus the world action movies. Um, and this is basically that, no holds barred, um, but on on a TV show, on okay. sci-fi. And it seems like the kind of thing that would be rated R, but it's rated PG-13. And the reason that's relevant is because there was an episode, a, a part of one of the ep- Sorry, what? <laughs> it's because the conservatives are losing, but we'll go, we'll go with it. <laughs> the, um, well, I mean, yeah. I'm just being a smart ass. Um, but the, the, um, the character, he ends up um, smiling in a mirror when a thing comes together in his mind. And I'm not going to say too much more than that in case anybody doesn't want uh, spoilers. Fuck him. But uh, Happy, the, uh, the, the talking um, imaginary friend unicorn that flies um, that he's talking to uh, says... Uh, and that guy's voiced by Patton Oswalt, by the oh, way, God. so I would definitely recommend watching the show. <laughs> Isn't it um, is Chris Maloney says, the main character? Yes. Oh, God. It looks it looks interesting. The fact that it's done by the people who made Crank makes me not interested in it. But Chris Maloney that's not and my, Patton Oswalt. I, that's that's not my kind of movie. <laughs> like, and, oh, and, well, I, li- I, yeah. liked, I liked Crank a lot. Crank was fucking amazing. And I have a lot of friends to do. I have nothing against it. It's just not the kind of movie I like. In the same way, like, I'm really weird about movies because well, I, I really... Mean, but yeah, the idea, it looks, like, the show look like, I keep seeing the ads, and I'm like, this looks fucking amazing. Yeah. I just don't know that it's for me. I'm just happy to see Chris Maloney working, well, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because the thing, the thing about it is, is that Crank, the, it was done by people who used to shoot skateboarding videos. Okay. And so, um, they wanted to, like, skateboarding and BMX and shit like that, extreme shit, like, it, it, the 90s were the 90s, and then, like, the early 2000s happened, and movies like Crank came out. Um, so, at, like, with that in mind, y- you have these two directors doing all these insane sh- shots with, with cameras because they know how to do it. And you have this insane action movie done from the perspective of somebody constantly high on uppers, killing a lot of people, <laughs> and having sex in the middle of Chinatown. Yeah. And, like, to me, the fact that it did that and the fact that it was also made by s- skaters, so it has a shit ton of, like, like hip hop and, uh, and and punk music and like like heavy metal like the whole thing starts off with a quiet riot song um and <laughs> so like that is that is fucking awesome to me and i think that if you maybe watch it from the perspective of a music head rather than from the perspective of a movie head you'll like it too or maybe even <laughs> from the perspective of a game. if you if you like video games it's basically like watching uh, one of the greatest single player campaigns ever. And I great. do not like video games. Um, <laughs> but the music, you could get it. Too. No, no. I, I, well, that's, what, that's why I liked Baby Driver, because I liked the music at end of it. I thought the narrative that they told through the music was was its own story. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm one of those weird, weird people that's not a video game person. I think when they were too expensive for me to keep up with them when I was a kid. And then eventually I just said, fuck it. Like, it was so far behind the controller that I didn't care to ever put the time into learning it. 
And I'm like, yeah, fuck all that noise. Well, I mean, there's some relatively simple games that you could get into, and most of the classics you can get totally legally for, and that's a sarcastic statement, totally <laughs> legally for free online. Um, but th the point of all of that was that um, this show is great. I would recommend people watch it. It's fucking amazing. And also, uh, to sort of ties in with the whole conspiracy angle, because the government and media and all that are working with basically giant sex cults. Oh. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> like the first season's all about him recovering his estranged daughter from um from from a child prostitution ring that once turned them into forever children um so i'll, I'll leave it that way for now I'm suddenly more but interested the, the reason i brought all the <laughs> yes it's fucking great i like taken um, but I'm, I'm imagine um, i'm imagining taken so with a schizophrenic chris maloney as opposed to uh, Liam Neeson. yeah there you go. <laughs> yeah it's it's that's that's pretty you're not far off in terms of vibe. I'm not going to say too much because I, I know for a fact that um, that I'll ruin things. But, no, you can't ruin it for um, me. You can ruin it for my listeners but, and fuck those people. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, well, really? that's, that's the thing I'm not going to do. Yeah. He's a nicer um, guy than I am. So, like, the reason I brought all that up is because there's a scene when a plan seems to click in his mind really, really well. And... The way he's smiling in the mirror, uh, Happy says, the way you're smiling makes me think you don't know what smiling is for. <laughs> um, I love that. <laughs> and and I've been told that in real life about the way I smile. Okay. So I sort of, that's the reason I think laughing is uncharacteristic because most of the time when I laugh, I sound like a movie villain. That's the best way to sound. Awesome. <laughs> I love yeah. villains. My, fa my favorite comic book character was always the kingpin they're very often the most interesting like one character. of my favorite characters ever in a movie is fucking what's his name from uh gamer oh yeah yeah michael c hall yeah michael character. c hall's villain in that movie because he's so ridiculous like <laughs> i've never seen a movie i've not seen gamer uh it's it's well worth the watch it's not a great movie but it's amazing and certain like i've never seen a movie where world domination is actually what the like there's not a specific goal that the person has literally controlling the minds of everyone on the planet is the goal and there is not a more cartoon thing that you could possibly want a villain to want and it's, yeah. and it's played by dexter so yeah, um, whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah well I'll definitely check that out um but uh yeah where were we second cd second oh yeah CD. okay so i was uh <laughs> so um operation mind crime okay. and operation mind crime 2 by um by queen's right um this is an album that not only stands on its well album series I, I sort of count them as the same album since it's the same story um that has the same concept album mentality that i like from year zero um and it's the story of a poverty-stricken man with no prospects stuck in a very corrupt hyper-political world um surrounded by the filth of everything and crime and all that he gets taken in by um he gets taken in by basically a cult and by the way i'm spoiling these albums for those of you who wanted to just fucking know the thing so nobody um, listens to music know, nobody, nobody listens to albums anymore this is my way to try and get them to listen to them okay well here, here's here's your ad for for mind crime he gets inducted into this cult um, called Anarchy X, um, and the guy who runs the cult basically promises people whatever they want, drugs, money, whores, anything, as long as they're willing to kill whoever he wants to kill. And he claims, he pulls them in by claiming that this is going to change the world and make it better. And he might actually genuinely believe it, but in the end game, he's, um, he ultimately ends up, uh, killing politicians for his own personal gain and it all seems to be falling apart because people are re realizing in the in the in the movement a few people are realizing that they've been used um and our main character john um he was one of the first um one of the first people inducted into the program uh he was uh there for that uh, that initial speech um where like the reason he joined, I, I'm, I'm not looking at the lyrics right now, but I can tell you uh, one of the lines from uh, from, the, from one of the bridges to the chorus. And um, uh, I used to tell, I used to trust the media to tell me the truth. That was the truth. But now I see the payoffs. 
everywhere. You, it, it, but now I see the para- payoffs everywhere I look. Who can you trust when everyone's a crook? Um, and then there's another one like, but now the holy dollar uh, runs everybody's lives. Um, it doesn't matter how many you kill um, or who dies or something like that. And his motivations are to end the corruption that he sees in the world because he blames that corruption for everything wrong with his life. Mm -hmm. So he falls into drugs, he falls into prostitution, he falls into a mentality of, you know, like satisfying his carnal desires so that when he comes back from all of this killing, he still feels like a human. Mm -hmm. But he realizes eventually that that's not enough. And one of the people who helps him realize that is a prostitute in a church um, that, uh, that he falls in love with she's there she actually seems to care unlike the other prostitutes and um and she uh nurses his wounds she tells him things are going to be all right and that maybe he shouldn't be involved with this organization anymore because she sees the good in him and she knows because he's told her um that he was not in this for all this corruption he was in this to try and make the world a better place and so he doesn't um, he doesn't do it at first, but the thought has been planted in his mind. And after a few more killings of high-profile figures, because he's one of the best assassins, and so he gets the best uh, the best targets. Um, like a televangelist is killed in the beginning of one of his songs. Um, after a few more of those, he eventually finds out that he's now supposed to kill Mary because she knows too much. And uh, um. The plot goes that he tries to run with her, and he tries and tries and tries, but eventually they catch up, um, and the music builds to a beautiful orchestral crescendo in the 80s power ballad style. (laughs) And it does this while she gets shot, eventually right in the end um, of this chase. She gets shot. Mm. Now, the entire album um, starts with him being in a mental hospital, and the nurse... um, I think she calls him a scumbag as she walks out of the room, um, monster or something like that. But he sa- he says, "I remember now." And then it starts off all this chain of memories of everything that happened. And um, interesting. That reminds me. Basic- of, that reminds me a lot of Trainwreck by Boys Night Out. Um, that's it's, yeah. it's a different story, but the whole you know you're you're li- listening kind of like the mad ramblings and memories of somebody who's doesn't quite have it all together themselves. Right. Well. That was Operation Mind Crime 1. In the end, he realizes everything that happened, and he realizes how much of it wasn't his fault. And in the end, in, in the end of the album, he says the same I remember now line that he said at the beginning, um, after he like sings about how he's been waiting in this empty room, in my empty room, the name of the, the song. Yeah, it's a good song. And um and he he's talking about how like the room is full of all of the memories of all of the things that he realizes he lost with Mary because mm. um, she was his last clinging like grasp of humanity. Mm-hmm. That album was released a couple decades ago. Yeah. Um, but Op- Operation Mind Crime 2 was released while I was in high school. And Operation Mind Crime 2 is the sequel to that album where he um, gets revenge. He comes back and fucking figures out how to get how to get back sort of semi-aligned um so that he can root out everyone and the way it all came together in the end was amazing because basically he still wanted the same revolution but he ended up taking revenge on this organization that ripped him away from his humanity abused him and stomped on everybody like him Mm. and all in the name of the actual anarchy that he wanted um he didn't end up getting anarchy but the point is that he got, he got the sort of closure he needed that he could move on with his life. As far as I remember it anyway, it's been a while since I listened to it, but I always tell people to listen to that and that the way it comes back in after the, the last track where he's remembering all this shit with one foot in hell, it's amazing. Hmm. I cannot recommend it enough. Nice. Get on. Um, and that's the sort of like it's a cautionary tale, you know. It's about you can't lose yourself to the revolution, or the revolution will never happen. Mm. Ain't that the fucking truth? That's yeah, that's big. I gotta just so. 
go ahead. No, no, you go on. I'm, I'm having a blast oh, I was listening. Just, so. I was going to say, so that... Well, I, I was just saying that's basically the, the gist of that album series. Okay. I would highly recommend people listen to it, but go ahead. Okay, number three. <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to say something to that. Um, okay, so number three, um, I'll jump into a genre that's not metal, um, which is uh, Immortal Technique. Now, I like The Martyr a lot. Um because that album went a lot of places that a lot of the other albums wouldn't. Um, because he had basically, he wasn't designing it for profit. He could use a lot more samples. Like he originally started out, Felipe Corazon started out making sampled tapes to uh, put his vocals over. Hmm. Um, and that's how he initially got his, his start. Um, he he would go to rap battles and he would, uh, he would totally destroy his opponent. Um, but he didn't get recognition until he started making his own um and his mixtapes were basically just him over things that he thought worked um with with his dj set as well and um and he he got a name for himself but he really started to make waves not only in hip-hop but in the world of actual real world activism when he came out with uh with revolutionary volume one and two everybody needs to listen to it fucking everybody it should be part of your schooling <laughs> um, like these albums are so information rich, so culture dense, and the way that they can speak to political issues without losing humanity is amazing because he's not just talking about why you should believe what he believes. He's talking about why, um, the world is the way it is, what led to the corruption and how things can improve on a general level. His um, albums are very, <laughs> very human. I, 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 I mean, they're very, like, they're very rich with stories. And that's one of the things I love about right. listening to him. Like he, I, I would think that there are certain political things that I know I disagree with him on, but he, the way he, he weaves the tales together is super, super compelling, even to someone like who doesn't see things like he does. Well, right. And you know, that's the thing. He probably, would hate one of the fundamentals of my politics, which is that equality is impossible. Yeah. It's not even something that it's not even something that works in physics. So why could you make it into a social model when it doesn't even work in the physical world? And, and that's kind of what that I doesn't was make any at. sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> um so I don't like anything that tries to equalize. I like things that like let people shine for what they are. Um but that's me personally. Yeah. Uh and when I listen to his music, what I'm listening for is the overwhelming barrage of truth you can get <laughs> from somebody trying to change the fundamental social paradigms that the world has. Now, a good example of this is Peruvian Coke. Now, yep. a lot of people would just consider this a song where, um, where you have a rapper talking about guns and drugs and sluts and shit. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people might just listen to this song as, you know, yet another example of that and think, yeah, this is some banging tunes, yo. That's a very but shallow understanding the people of that song, who understand, though. Yeah, and unfortunately, I've met people who authentically do think that way. Um, Ugh, but gross. the point of the song um, was to prove that there's another side to the story in the drug war. Mm. Uh, same with Dance with the Devil. Mm. Like... The point of him saying he was there when that woman was raped um, wasn't to say, and, and he raped his mom too, wasn't to say that he was actually physically in a place with this guy. Um, it was to say that the way that, and he explained this in an interview, um, so I'm not just like putting words in his mouth, you know, fucking like his line about like, thinking you'd know what Pac would say. Um, you don't know shit about a dead man's perspective and talking shit to get your neck bone disconnected. I'm not trying to put words in this guy's mouth. Uh, this is what he said it was about. Um, he wasn't there. He didn't rape anybody. He didn't commit a crime. He was saying that is a metaphor for the way that people treated women in his culture and for the way that culture <laughs> treats people that it should hold up. Like They've lost all their value. They've lost all their respect. It's not about being human anymore it's about getting bitches and money and chain and he wants to oppose that particular like mentality in everything he does 
that's the reason he wrote the rap the way he did and the reason he wrote songs like Natural Beauty and the reason he had that very personal song about that girl who died uh, in a hospital because um, because she basically she wanted to be with him but she didn't want to tell him she was barren um, and so when he tried to like activate it before she was ready and took it personally when she said no um, she lost everything and so did he and he realized that basically you don't know what you have until it's gone and this is the story of a very personal experience from a very personal perspective of a guy who thinks that people have lost their way culturally and seek to live on garish gratuity rather than you know their souls and their spirits yeah I think somebody was getting ready to say something though, and like I was talking. But. No, no, no. I was just I was listening to. It. Um, I guess I, I I am definitely very fascinated with Immortal Technique because there's there's ways in which I mean he he breaks even like the stereotypes of guys like that. Because <laughs> there are other are other rappers out there that yes are, are like that, and even like you said, I mean there's the cultural side of things. Um, I mean we me and Liz have talked about. One thing that I, I'm always, when I look back at like even like the early 90s hip hop, like you, there are cultural things that they talk about that are now kind of glorified in music, but when they talked about them, they weren't trying to glorify them. Like so much of like Biggie's story and what he'd rap about, like he never, he never rapped about the fact that like growing up in the hood was great. His whole fucking point was this is garbage and you got to do whatever you can to fucking get out of it. You know, Right, like it, it wasn't to glorify the subpar way of life, which is what I think a lot of rap does. Yeah, no, being from the streets is legit. Well, no, it's it's shitty, and understanding that is we want to make it so other people don't have to do that. Not that that becomes the norm for everybody. Like, I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding in what well, like the artists were trying to say, and that's what the, the you know, and that and that's what the um, Jay Z's the story of OJ was about. Mm -hmm. um, it was about how. There's a concept called the white shadow in, in the hip hop community. Um, and it's sort of like, <clears throat> no matter how much you can liberate your culture, you're always going to be seen through the lens of what the, uh, what the white man wanted for you back then and what he still wants for you now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that makes it hard for somebody to produce what they want to produce without also seeming like the stereotype and, or, um, producing what they want to produce without being concerned with the way that a white person would see them. It's that lens. It's like, um, I, I, I forget who it was, but I remember subscribing to them. If I remember, I'll post a tweet uh, recommending the video. But they, they talked about um, why Dave Chappelle almost, uh, why Dave Chappelle quit uh, the, the, the biz for a while uh, of making the comedy he made. And one of the primary reasons was this white guy that laughed at a joke um, a little too hard and the joke was on black people Bill Burr. and he thought and he, I don't think it was him that's the speculation um, I've I think heard it was some, I think it was somebody who worked on his cast oh, okay. well that the Bill did work uh, on the cast that was the point Bill used to be on the cast well, people forget it <laughs> No, and and I, and I recognize that. I don't think it was him. Okay. I think because I think he I think he would have said something about it, and I think, uh, I think he specifically referred to this guy as a guy. I don't okay. think he I don't think he had any deep attachment. Okay. Uh, career wise to this guy, and I think that Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr get along extremely well, okay. um, especially since they've been at black conferences with uh, with with one another. Um. So, but like aside from that, like, the story of OJ, um, highlights. This mentality that no matter what you do, um, no matter how positive you are or what ends you put that positivity to, there's still going to be people who can't see you except through the lens of being black. And um, well, especially the, um, the, 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 the like modern day, like whitewashed culture, black community who thinks if I don't have cars, guns, drugs and bitches, I'm nobody. Um, Everybody's just trying to get theirs because, like, they don't fundamentally, they don't have a direction outside their color. Yeah. And that's the point of moving forward. If you if you want to be your own culture, you've got to stand on your own and, like, not have that shadow hanging over you. Eric, Eric and July has one of my favorite videos on this. Mm -hmm. And because his whole point is, is like, 
I don't sit here and weigh my every decision and I'm going to make in life by what white people think of me because I don't fucking care. Like I'm going to go and I'm going to live my life the way, you know, according to the principles that I have. And right on both sides, like you, you know, the conservative side and the liberal side of like black culture, he, you know, he's like, why are we all trying to, um, dis- why are we all trying to live up to any expectations that another race has? Because I don't fucking care. <laughs> and I think that was, and, and that's, my- that's a good thought to, Go ahead. Well, and, I, and he like he ties that back into like that was like what he saw as the fundamental difference between Malcolm X and MLK was that Malcolm was saying yeah like let's like we can't expect anything from the white people but like why do you why do you want to have any expectations why do you need approval fuck all that let's if they don't want us we're gonna go and start our own cultures and do our own shit without them <clears throat> and that you know that makes sense at the same time like the point of discussing the white shadow is not to just simply say that um that it exists and that it's a problem in the minds of many black people but also to say that there are still a lot of people who believe in the old ways and those people um want this paradigm to continue and so influence and fund it you know the david dukes of the world um so so fund it to keep it in that particular direction keep Mm -hmm. the trajectory and that momentum built so they don't lose their power and all of this means that, yeah, it'd be nice to just ignore it, but a lot of people feel that not only would that be impossible, but counterproductive even if it was doable. Um, and I can I can see both sides of the argument. That's part of the problem with being somebody like me. I try to see it from both sides, and both sides of the argument make sense. Well, and in this particular case... Go ahead. Well, and to me, like me and Liz talk about it, obviously being in a, a mixed relationship there's certain perspectives that are perhaps different than I think a lot of other people see. But one of the things we, we do talk about with the race issue is that, like, I understand why people think, well, if we don't talk about racism, like, it's never going to be fixed. But in the same vein, like, at a certain point, you just continue to re-educate. <laughs> you, you, you continue to re-educate people how to be racist. And the form it takes is right. changes, but you're just perpetuating racism. Like, at a certain point, if we all stopped talking about it, there would have been a generation that just didn't have a fucking idea that you could hate people because they look different. Outside of the normal, yeah, maybe I don't know. Tribal instinct is a thing, and the, I, the gestalt applies to the way humans interact as well. But. Well, and that's and that's what I was getting at. I see both sides on that. Like, I, I don't think it's something that we should not talk about. Perhaps the level at which we talk about it, I disagree with in today's society. Right. But that's but that was exactly my point. Like, I get the point. I see it. Like, I, 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 a few things in this world infuriate me as much as racism. However. I, I know plenty of racists, and there's no changing their mind. They're just going to be what they are, and I don't know that I need to waste my energy or anyone else's on it. Just fucking keep your own shit and get out of my life. Right, right. So, but but all of that, it, all of that, the, the the secondary point in the song was the story of OJ was to discuss how, um, and and the, this is why it ties back into tech, um, was to discuss how, uh, if you have the problem in front of you the solution becomes building the new paradigm with the tools that you have you do what you can as um yeah as riley freeman learned from the boondocks um and show. in in the particular case of this a lot of people's solutions is to do what the elites do and try to become as close to one as possible without selling out um, and what the elites do is they sink res- they, they sink their monetor- monetary resources into um, resources, assets, you know, arts, yeah. metals, real estate, um, and businesses. And his his particular thing is, yeah, maybe um, maybe this problem exists, but the only way to not let it exist is to try and rise above it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not not by rejecting your blackness like OJ did by saying like I'm not black I'm OJ um, and this is by the way not just me saying this I'm getting this because it made sense to me when when black cultural critics said it yeah no I get um, it I I've, forget I've, which one it was I've listened to some some uh, talk on it myself so yeah but to, to be black and proud and not lose anything and that's the reason um, well that's such a difficult thing to do because just because I mean both externally and internally, there are cultural expectations, and you know, right? <laughs> I, I would say culturally, I'm probably more black culture than my wife is, even though I'm white as fucking hell, and she looks like she's from Jamaica. But there's, 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 I would never ever understand like certain parts of that culture just because I can't. 
Um, well, right. But but the, the the point, the reason I paused was I was trying to remember the lyrics, but I, I can't remember them fully. One of the tech songs said, um, said, I don't uh, fuck a record deal. I want development land. Uh, sorry, yeah, development land for my benevolent clan. That's actually and, uh, uh, that, that's a particular song. I can't remember what it was, but is we're actually using in the the Freedom Song Three Six Five project as one of our examples of you know libertarian theory in music because I, I I love that fucking lyric, that, love it so much. I, I think that was freedom of speech. That that is. What I it think was. that was freedom of speech. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because like I I can if the song's playing if the music is there I can actually sing that song by heart I've probably listened to it around five hundred times. Um, which version? The, but the, the but I don't know which version. I, I mean I've I, I listened to it on YouTube so I'm not completely well, no, sure. No, no, there's because the, there's um, the there's it, the version he did by himself and then there's the version he did with uh the the metal band essentially. I don't know about that version. Interesting. Because the only the, the only semi metal band that I know that he's ever worked with was like Coca Nostra, and he didn't do freedom of speech with them. Wait a minute, so oh, maybe I'm missing what, hold, something. No, hold on. Okay, so you're talking about this as a uh, a Tech Nine or not Tech Nine? Um, because that's that's an Ice T song. Immortal Technique. I uh, freedom of speech. Immortal Technique. Yeah. Free- freedom of speech is an Ice T. Is an song. Immortal Technique song. No, Ice T. It's from like I will I will look this up. The eighty in nineteen eighty three, I think. Maybe me earlier than that, and then he redid it with body. It was a body count. He did it later on. Maybe and he maybe uh, Immortal Technique moment. did it and added to it. I'm, I I didn't know this version existed, so I'm real interested in this. Cool. Hence why I was getting wires crossed. I'm like, wait, I thought we were talking about Immortal Technique, and that's that's uh, <laughs> I know that lyric, and why do I oh, Ice T? One moment. No, not a problem. This is this is fun. I'm going to look this up on Genius, because if there was a version done by previous people, um, it'll say that. Yeah, nobody's saying this is not an original song. Um, well, that specific line uh, is off of... Go back, Liz. Freedom of Speech, because Freedom of Speech is off of... Uh, go up. The, it's the I- Freedom of Speech, the Iceberg, I think it's called. I don't know why you looked this up on YouTube, though. Well, I'm sorry. Um, well, well, look up the lyrics to that song. Well, because that's specific. And, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, like... Go up, Liz. Read, read the lyrics. Um, where do you want me to start? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah, here. Um, so what we want to tip your argument is weak. Sense of Records TV school broke too. And who decides what's right to hear you? Hey, PRMC, or PMRC, you stupid fucking assholes. The sticker on the record is what makes them sell gold. Yeah, this is... Not the same song. Uh, well, Not that, even in the same flow. Well, no, no. Uh, the, the reason I say because that specific line I pulled out of here. Um, and, and maybe they, that's. I'm, I'm gonna look this up. I'm not saying it is the same. Uh, the same song, but that line specifically is was in the song, <laughs> or was in this song. And so maybe it was just like a callback to the, uh, the inspiration. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna look it up. I'm not gonna waste too much time on the show doing it. But. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. So. This the, the, this is the the first verse of this song after it plays a Pinocchio sample, um, where it's the Pinocchio says, "I got no strings to hold me down." That that line from yep. that song. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, the that particular so so it starts with verse one. Step into the club smoothly with the L in my hand, bitches. No, I'm a freak like the elephant man. Intelligent plans, fuck a record deal. I want development land with my benevolent clan, and that's the and that's the reason that I only trust my fam. Forty thousand records sold, four hundred grand. Fuck a middleman. I won't pay anyone else. I'll bootleg it and sell it to the streets myself. I have never heard anybody else say those lines. All right, um, I'll uh, I'll find it for you <laughs> after the show and send you a link. Because, uh, yeah, no, the, and uh, c- contextually, I think it is just him throwing an, an homage out to Ice-T in it. Um, because, yeah, no, that, that definitely is not the same lyrics through there. Um, but that, that 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 line is, I think, in, like, the second verse of uh, the original Freedom of Speech. So. Okay. All right. Well, because, like, to me, I've never seen any covers tech has done i think he's done all original stuff on his own well and i don't think this is a cover this is definitely not a cover from what you're saying what i think it actually is is i you, you never listen to um kick out the jams by fucking the mc5 
It's well, a, I listened to it. It's been a, it's been way too well, my, the, long since normally I listen to underground stuff. Yeah, no, I get you. Well, my point was so the, that particular song it kind of exists as a song, but it's never had the same lyrics ever. Um, like literally, uh, there's been bunches of bands that have done "Kick Out the Jams," and I think the only thing is is they they'll say that "Kick Out the Jams" during the chorus, okay, like, and it it's literally different lyrics for every artist who's ever performed it. Um, yeah, and, and I and I think it's just an homage to this to this idea. Um, um, what do you I mean, maybe, you, but this song you, particularly was about, about... Oh, well, okay. So, <laughs> it's, I know we're probably, like, I haven't looked at the timer, but we're it's probably, long. like, two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, roughly. Well, um, that, okay, so that particular line um, was fantastic, and it's off, it's off Revolutionary Volume 2, um, where you got Mumia Abdul-Jabbar to, uh, to do some of the... the um, some of the tracks on it like not not like singing but like speaking um and the whole thing is great because it shows how things connect he's he's not just trying to yeah. say his truth he's trying to educate people and give them grounds to move forward and that's what i like about tech i like that tech isn't just there to make sure that like he entertains people he's there to make sure that they've got something to go on for the future and uh, and and i could to be honest, I could go on for like six hours about Revolutionary Volume One and Two. I've listened to both yeah. of them back to back probably twenty times, um, solid. Like not not counting like individual track listens. But um, he talks about in, in in the fourth branch, for instance. He talks about how um, the uh, the uh, secret societies are really running things, uh, which he further reflects in the Martyr when he talks about the one percent and how the banksters are puppeteering the planet. Um, and so these albums i can't say enough about them yeah to justify you listening i, I would anybody who wants to to me uh, if i have children uh, i'm going to homeschool them for part of their education not all of it because i think that social interaction is important for uh, brain development but part of the homeschooling is when they're in high school i'm going to sit them down with these two records and uh, tell them to write notes because these records will open eyes these records will peel back scabs and freshen scars so that people can see that these things are still here and still painful and still a problem and nothing has really changed that's that's the kind of music i like the music that's, that can sort of supercharge supercharge and empower the individual it's why also because i know you probably don't want this to be a four-hour podcast <laughs> even though i could definitely do it um it's why i also like endgame by megadeth it's the same reason. That album is fucking incredible. So are so many others. I, I also like Dystopia. It was a hard choice between Endgame and Dystopia for me. But both of those albums um, are fantastic. Endgame specifically because it was prescient. It, it foretold a shit ton of the things that were going to happen. And if you listen to that album and do it for notes like you would with tech, you'll also get that sort of history lesson. And to me, that's, that's hugely important. Um... Megadeth in Endgame, he talks about the RFID chips, he talks about FEMA camps, he talks about extreme speech and mind control through through the elites and the media. Um, he talks about the fact, like, it's basically, if you, if, if you, if, I, I don't know if either of you listen to a whole lot of Megadeth, do you? Um, not a ton myself. I, I like Megadeth out of all that generation, so it was that. So, so like, um, you you know generally what they're about, right? Like anger, uh, sorry, anger, like that sort of thing. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. No, I <laughs> I talk a lot about Megadeth because politically speaking, I, I tend to agree with his uh, his messages musically. Right. So he was angry because he was kicked out of uh, Metallica for being too angry, for being oh, wow. too intense for the band, um, and for be having drugs and. Um, or, sorry, I may I may have misspoke. He got kicked out of Metallica. Is that what I said? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I things can run together when I'm also reading information. Yeah. Um, but he got kicked out of Metallica for being too intense and on too much drugs and booze. Um, and so he was angry. Um, by the way, the squeaking you occasionally hear is this fucking chair. Um, oh, yeah. No worries. Yeah, I didn't hear it, so you're good. Side issue. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe this mic is better than I give it credit for. Um, <laughs> no, you so, sound better than a lot of our guests. So. He, ha he has 
a lot of anger. His original drummer had an anarchist A on his drum set. His whole thing was about, well, fine, if I can't exist in your system, I'm going to fuck your rules up and do it my way. And he made, like Dave Mustaine and, and, and the whole Megadeth crew, made fucking consistently better music than than Metallica did, especially in the 90s when St. Anger came out and, uh, and all this fucking garage metal that, that Metallica has been putting out lately. Um, paling in comparison to, to Megadeth's um, career. Mm. But if you know a lot about Megadeth, one of their songs um, was Hangar 18. Oh, and uh, this song. was off Rust in Peace. And it's, okay, so you know that song about how he found himself looking in the wrong hangar and knowing too much. Mm. And yep. that, that was all about how that, that was all about how like the, the whole orchestral nature of that song was like, even though it's metal, it's an orchestra, was designed actively to uh, synthesize in your mind a picture of him finding out all this stuff and then having to run for his life. Um, so if you picture that as sort of the introduction to albums like Endgame and Dystopia, and I'm going to focus on Endgame because of how prescient it was, um, this is the result of knowing too much. It's the result of starting to go down the rabbit hole, go go into your own personal Hangar 18. It's the sorts of conclusions you come to when starting to find out how the elites think. And it's right. Um, Endgame is also the name of a documentary done by Alex Jones, Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, about the Bilderberg Group and the uh, in interconnected mesh of highway and uh, public land systems that basically means that the U.S. government has a security net everywhere that they claim they own and can control, which means that we're shuttled from place to place only as long as they allow us to be. And if they ever want to lock down, they've got really easy ways to do it uh, and start to kill people en masse who disagree. Mm. And this is what Endgame was about. Endgame was the natural endgame of all of this, where all of the liberty is lost, everything, all the freedom is sapped. You're stuck with an RFID chip, or you're. Um, I think I think the line actually goes: you get the RFID chip, or you're just an illegal alien and an enemy combatant of America. Welcome to New World Order. Um, this is where we're headed. I'm I'm a heavy conspiracy theorist. Anybody who's followed me for any length of time knows this. I see dystopia now, and I see us coming to dystopia quickly. Um, we're rushing to the edge, and nobody's stopping it. And it's tragic, but like, it's not going to happen uh, overnight. It's 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 like the first song is all about how, like, the culture has changed to be controlled and to be enslaved in, into this sort of mindset. Um, well, the first vocal track, because uh, the first track is just instrumental stuff. But the, the album cover really says it all. It's a bunch of esoteric occlusion on the side of like dead bodies and symbolism with this big prison colony in the middle um, and a bunch of people in orange jump, jumpsuits with uh, barcodes on the back of their he bald heads mm. uh, shuffling through uh, to this oblivion gate. Uh, yeah. And that's where we're headed. And the, the, the album... It's a bracing experience if you listen to it for content rather than just because it's rad metal. Mm -hmm. But This Day We Fight is about how Americans have lost their way. Um, and how the military-industrial complex has taken over everything to such a degree that people will fight when they don't know why they're fighting. Um, and The whole album is fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. But eventually, the character, the char well, the, the archetype, I think, is a more appropriate term um, than character in this particular case because they never really define uh, a character. Um, the archetype of the character that goes through this this terrible world um, eventually realizes that he's got to go against the system. And when he starts, everything goes downhill. In, in the song, Bite the Hand, what did what did it say? Um, when it's dog eat dog, you're what you eat, just like the mad dog that bites the hand that feeds, and like 
the depression of a depression, worldwide suicide for the economy caused by the, what was it, dialectic chaos when the mob <laughs> in Wall Street took we the people for a ride. Like, this is not weak. This is not an album you listen to if you don't want to learn something. This is another album I'll be making my kids take notes on because this album, it lays it out there. You don't need anything more than this album to know why America is like headed down the tubes now. Now, Dave's not an anarchist anymore. As far as I know, he's a, a Republican, but that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that the way this message was delivered was clear and concise in being able to say that this system is fucked, it's enslaving us all, and the end game of it is us being a passive cattle for the elite's amusement and concern, rather than being free, independent human beings who do what they want. And if we're not careful, we're going to end up there. I mean, that's incredibly depressing, but I can't argue with it. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I warned you. I'm intense. Yeah, no, intense is good. And I mean, it, it's something that I mean, I'm not going to say that. Bring it up. I'm not going to say we, I've never had this conversation before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure when I was, I literally, I was writing my uh, the thing that I, I it, it, not to veer too much here. The thing that I find the most uh, telling about this, uh, was it CJ and Brett and I, I can't, was it Richard Grove had a roundtable maybe a month or two ago, and they were talking about. Um, all of the shit that if you were so inclined to go look about all these people, that's just out in the open. Like none of this, like none of the the ideas and ways of which they've manipulated society are all that well hidden. Nobody looks for, nobody cares. Like nobody is operating yep. at that fucking level. So when you can like go and read the documents, they're all public knowledge. It's just why the fuck would you unless <laughs> you know unless you're you don't buy in. And so the beauty of the whole system is like they can be very public about all this stuff and. You're just a lunatic if you think this. So no, the only people who would ever look it up can be easily dismissed. And it's 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 almost right. worse than that. Like, if they tried to hide this stuff, you might have something to show up. Like, you, you read, because you can go anywhere and look it up. Like, oh, well, that, that's, it just doesn't mean what you think it means. You're, you're reaching there. Like, well, well, no, it's explicit. Yeah, it's it's super intense. <laughs> right. And, and, like, so this is near nearer to the end. And, by the way, Endgame is... is the song where all of the ideas that were expressed previously in an al in the album get reified and confirmed and also reflected into the way that this society thinks right now, at least right now, then, and the way that it will operate in the future, which the future then, the future then is the now, now. Like, everything that they were talking about, the reason I called it prescient is because it is. Um, everything that they were talking about in that album will happen in the next six years. And um, so... The, the album has the last song as a sarcastic song about the, the, the way that the rest of this works. The only right that I have less to lose is the right to go insane. Um, and the song before that is probably the bleakest, most depressing song on the album. Um, I'm just going to read the lyrics because it's a very short set of lyrics. Far off on the horizon, you can barely see their torches, but rest assured they're out there and they're coming. If you listen, the sound is growing nearer of infantry, marching out a hypnotizing rhythm, destroying every town, light it up and burn it down. You may not like it now, but this is how the story ends. And so that's like verse one in the first chorus. And verse two is, above the ring of clashing steel, they raise flags of war, a sign to all the warriors who cannot hear amidst the smoke of cannonballs. They bang the drums of death, pound of cadence out for those who cannot see destroying every town and then that, and then poison the well and scorch the earth. Uh, everything slashed and burnt. You may not like it now, but this is how the story ends. And so the point of that was that you can hear this coming. The signs are there. It's not too late, but it's probably going to happen anyway because nobody does. Yep. <laughs> Don't have kids, Jeremiah. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Um, I was actually talking about this or, in, in, in something the other day in that, you know, what the fuck kind of world have I brought my kid into that, you know, we, it's, it, it, I think it's, it's why the, the Matrix, while I don't particularly care for them, is, uh, at least I, I like the first one, the other two were kind of shitty in my opinion, mm -hmm. but the, the whole idea that it presents with like the red pill versus the blue pill and going back to like, like, I don't know that I would have been okay, like, I, I was definitely losing it before the red pill, but I, I really... I don't know how to answer that question, how to how to put that together. Like, 
I think that I would have lost touch. Like maybe like understanding gives me hope to deal with things. But I don't right. know, I don't know that like having that hope is really all that like, I mean it's maybe a salve on the wound for myself, but would I ever try and give that to somebody else because um I don't know that if if there's a potential to not have to deal with all the shit that like I know, then all the you know, all the shit that I see. I won't say no, because I can't there's no way I can know it. But to the shit that I see I really want anyone to have that fucking burden. But, he, but here's the thing, though, and, and mm-hmm. the reason antinatalism doesn't work, in my opinion, um, the world is this way because most people are passive cattle. Most people are passive cattle because they were raised to be and because the system reified their passive cattle status. Mm-hmm. So let me be very specific in saying that if we want a better world. The solution is to not is not to not bring people into it, but to bring the right people into it and be good enough that they don't turn out wrong. It's a lot of pressure, man. <laughs> what I mean, that's I gotta, what, I gotta raise my kid better. It is a lot of pressure, <laughs> right? Right on. Yeah, I once thought about having a. But you could call that the you could call that the enli- you could call it the enlightened man's burden. Yeah. Yeah. But then I have to like try and own that I'm better than people and can see something they don't and they just won't believe that. So. Yeah, well, they, the, the, well, the real I, thing is I, to remember where you came from. Nobody was anarchists to begin with, so you are better than them, but someday they could be better than you. Yeah, that, I mean, I've got nothing. nothing. I, I I don't like it. I, I'm a ver- into Thomas Sowell in the sense I don't think any man is static. I'm, that's what, what anytime, like, they always talk about how, well, how are all geniuses, you know, a little crazy? I'm like, well, how, how would you be if like you could see all the problems that are wrong with the world and know how to fix them and nobody would fucking listen to you of course you'd go crazy like you, it, it would be, the idea that like yeah. a, an intelligent person isn't crazy sounds more fucking ludicrous to me than anything else like yeah I'm just walking around on a planet full of fucking monkeys yeah. and they don't listen to me and I keep telling them they're fucking it up and they should probably do it this way but no they just keep doing it that way and and you're just watching everybody in the world the ship <laughs> fools yeah oh well I mean, are are you familiar with the Ship of Fools? Uh, it sounds familiar. The book, like the kids' book. Well, there's a kids' essay. Book. It's um, it's by it's it's by Ted Kaczynski. It's um, the Unabomber. <laughs> it's um, it's an essay about a guy who kept on coming up above deck, um, to to try and tell people that they were headed toward an iceberg, but they were all much more much more concerned with the affairs of the party and the way that the ship um shipmates treated each other, um, rather than you know the fact that they were all headed toward an iceberg and we're all going to die if they didn't turn around. Um, like little concessions politically were made um, and the captain wouldn't write the ship and everything was uh, was was rec- unrecognizable but by the main character, the, the nameless character, yeah. who was too low class to have any influence and uh, too enlightened to be listened to by the people who just wanted petty squabbles and didn't want to pay attention to the fact that they were headed toward an iceberg and their ultimate demise. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh, uh, don't really want to say I agree with the the Unabomber, but I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. It's not. I can't not argue. With, I can't argue with it. Unlike Stefan Bonio, I can't. I can't argue with that. So, <laughs> anyways, well, I don't know. I, I'm 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 practically a terrorist extremist anyway, so I figure fuck it. I might as well also read the previous people. Oh, well, I I uh, I remember the first time, like, time somebody gave me a Chomsky book, and they said, "Well, welcome to the list." <laughs> Here. Yeah, definitely. In that category now. <laughs> yep, you were you. There's no turning back from here. The NSA is watching you, even if they weren't already. There you now go. You, now you get a little bookmark next to your yeah. name. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. All right, where are we at, Liz? Uh, your last last album, I think. Or is he still going to wrap up? This is like reading Derrida, where the, oh, well, um, where the, like the, the, the ideas go on longer than the sentences, and I forget what the sentence was about when we started. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like we're translating um, this entire thing from German so, or something. Well, I, I think I am mostly German, if I remember correctly, so that <laughs> nice. kind of works. But uh, <laughs> crazy Germans. Um, what? No. So the last album I could recommend, because uh, there are too many. Like, oh, no, I get it, five, man. The reason I don't do top eight, but yeah. the um, the last album I could recommend. Uh, I'll do, I'll do two, like, and basically say why each one of these stands on its own for like the purposes that I would have for people. Um, uh, 
and why basically they're the same kinds of things that uh, that, that that you would get from these other albums that I've already discussed. No, real note taker albums, um, and I'll, I'll let people just discover this for themselves. Are um, Oceania by Surveillance, um, and Tomorrow's Future User, um, self titled album. Both of those, they're they're basically the same kind of mentality, and at the same time. Um, delivered in a different way and with other information like uh like tomorrow's future user uh says things about how medication and corporations are dominating everything and one of the music videos ends with they should move the super bowl to afghanistan because you know it's an implication that maybe if they did um they, they would suddenly start caring about the drug problem the u.s government is causing there um, and stop caring so much about the the, the blood doping and the the, the performance enhancing drugs that, uh, that 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 Lance is on. Um, you know, <laughs> I like the guy who's who was a, a member of that uh, who started the Tomorrow's Future User Project. He was also in Rage Against the Machine, um, and uh, Oceania by Surveillance is basically the same thing, only it's done to a danceable beat. Like, honestly, I could probably recommend 20 albums that are along this similar line. So, all right, it's not five, but I'll just say um, Tomorrow's Future User, Oceania by Surveillance, and um, Brainwasher by Sam. All of these are fantastic. Fuck yeah. Why don't you write on this more? <laughs> or do you, and I've just missed it. I mean... Well, I mean, so I plan to... But I've had recent brushes with uh, with extreme poverty, um, so I've had to move two states because basically people wouldn't take actual rent money that I had because they saw my social media, um, and I had an offer to be where I am now, and uh, so I moved two states and I've been trying to get settled. But now that I have my site, I'll be going into all of this stuff and more. Uh, so you can find that out at JeremiahHarding.com. Nice. That was going to be my next question. What can we plug? Yeah. You said there's a podcast as well? Yeah, I um, I record every Friday a podcast called The Weekly Hellscape. Um, and this podcast is designed to elucidate the weekly news that's happened in the past week that really proves my point uh, that I've been covering in this in this interview, that basically we're all fucked if we don't turn this around. I mean, he'd be just be preaching to the choir here, so I mean, there's that. Pretty much. I should probably let him get back to... Uh... Talking, yeah. to, talking to the rubes. <laughs> um, dude, that was... Uh... Well, I mean, because the rubes like to have information about culture. When I started the Weekly Hellscape, um, it was after a long period of studying how other people do this sort of thing. And one of the people I looked up to in this regard was Philip DeFranco, because what he does with his content is he starts with a culture segment. And that culture segment is... Um, where he goes over like actual pop culture and then he'll slam directly from something about like, you know, a, a, a Jay-Z controversy, just naming a pop star, not thinking of any specific controversy, yeah. but it came up in my brain. Um, well, actually I could probably think think of, ah, oh, oh, fucking R. Kelly controversy and then straight into Venezuelan politics. And I'm like, there you go. That's ingenious. You can get people into the serious stuff by by bringing up all of this stuff that's less serious and using the regular culture. Well, I mean, until you can get platform. people onto the alternative media track. Yeah, well, that might happen. Someday. I mean, well, like, YouTube is already like they've already started suggesting his stuff in the algorithm. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I mean, he's already like dropped the way that they promote him. Same as like, all of them, all, all those guys that are actually really good at that. Um, you know, because obviously corporate interests sure. have bought into that whole thing and. You know, so much for do no evil. Um, yeah, Frank DeFranco was always right. a weird one because well, I could so, never quite so, make heads or tails of his politics. Um, he definitely seemed like he, he he at least was trying to pay attention, and I always like, respected him for that. Because even that's hard to fucking find right. anymore. Right, and, 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 and... Go ahead. No, no, no that, that was the end of what I was saying. Yeah, it's just even finding people paying attention is difficult now. Oh, yeah, def well... Finding people paying the right kind of attention. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and then, like, so what he can do when he does that, like, ethically and legally, um, and within the terms of the contract that he that, that he signed in order to get on YouTube, um, is he can tag his videos with pop tags and then have the video also to cover things like 
like you know Trump scandals and the Venezuelan crisis and the Syrian war and Khashoggi and all of these things that people who like R. Kelly probably wouldn't normally pay attention to. For sure. And that's what I like about him. So I want to do that, but I'm extremely hateful and angry, cynical and bitter. And I don't... Uh oh, that was weird. Yeah, that was weird. What happened? I see poor network connection. I've been doing that the whole time. Honestly, it sounds like he had a microphone die on him. Maybe it was a battery powered thingy. I know we're just speculating at this point. Is that any better? Oh yeah. There hey, suddenly you're back. Is that any better? <laughs> we lost well, it, was, it was weird second. because it didn't like so, cut out. So. You just got quiet all of a sudden. No, um, I have a poor connection on my phone. Just did it again. <laughs> How's that? Yep. Yeah, that yeah, works. Yeah. All right, all right. Apologies. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're fine. Anyway, it was interesting. Um, I am. Um, I. So, I have a feeling I'm going to be censored at some point uh, if I post this stuff on other people's platforms. So I wanted to wait until I had my own site set up, um, and I'm develop my, developing my own theme right now, but I'm using somebody else's in the time being. Um, but I wanted to get my podcast out first. And so my podcast is me being that cynical, hateful, angry person um, that I know is going to get censored. Um, and like I can be free because my podcast started on my site. Um, but I can also put that sort of mentality of let's cover some culture and then get people into this stuff and let's tag it with everything so that when people search it, there's an off chance they'll see your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I can do that with mine and then get people into the hard-edged conspiracies. Seems like Wh whatever whatever moves the needle. That's as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm 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 down to move the needle as far and as hard as possible. This this bitch needs to turn around, or we are dead. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, no argument here. Hard to argue with that. Yeah, here I was expecting a whole lot more argument about this whole thing. I I've got nothing to argue with. <laughs> so, all right, boss. I'm, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go take care of my five year old and see what the hell she's been doing all morning. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude, it's been right. it's been well, a hell of a uh, lot of fun. It was a pleasure talking to you. Anytime Thank you, you want to fucking bullshit about so crazy much. conspiracies and music shit, man, let me know because that was that was fun. <laughs> it was very cool having you. It, it would be nice to not well, have well, like formal questions I have to ask. <laughs> well, and 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 I can definitely do that. Uh, what I, what I'll be doing. Uh, in, in terms of music, I'll have a series on my site where I discuss uh, music from from my particular crazy perspective, and uh, so I'll just send you articles, and you can read them if you if you're if you're ever interested in figuring I'm, that out. I'm um, more than happy I'll, to repost I'll come on that and discuss too. something if you ever want that. No, absolutely, man. Um, like Sorry, I said, what? I said I'm more, absolutely, and I'm more than happy to repost all that stuff because I'm always I'm always fascinated at the intersection of this and. Um, you know, I started the Freedom Song 365 project because I, I, I feel like people don't pay enough attention to the stuff that's in music. Um, we The first song we started out with, and I never knew this, it was actually Sherry Voluntary that brought it to me. You ever you know the song Silent Running by uh, Mike and the Mechanics? Um, and I think the song... I don't. It's, it's an old 80s pop song. Like, very, very pop. It reached, like, number three on Billboard, I think. And the second verse literally starts out with, there's a gun... Is, is it, and, and ammunition, I think. Yeah, there's a gun in the ammunition just inside the doorway. Um, use them only in emergency. Don't believe a, a thing the church and state they'll tell you. Uh, it, it's it's <laughs> number three on Billboard, and the, the message in it was fucking insane, like anarchist as hell. And you're like, whoa, where have we gotten to as a people? <laughs> so, um, well, you know, uh, we're talking we're talking uh, music. Let, let me just give this news that I just got an email about. Um, Hailstorm. Do you know them? I know, I know them. Band? I've sang their songs once or twice. Not my thing, but yeah, Hailstorm is touring with Aldous Cooper. Oh, well, there you go. Nice. That is news. So, all right, Irma awaits. Thanks a lot, boss. You have yourself a good Friday. Thank you for coming on. You as well, man. Be well. Let me know when this is out. I absolutely will. Yo!
Retreat! Clip to your moment, we're to your heart, get back!